Well, hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm Marie O'Neill. I'm a professor in environmental health sciences and epidemiology, and I'm the leader of the integrated health sciences core of the Michigan Center on Life Stage Environmental Exposures and Disease, otherwise known as MLEAD. Uh, as participants continue to join, I would like to go over a couple of logistical details. Um, all of you are, all the attendees, I should say, are in listen only mode, so you'll be muted for the duration of the event. Um, we would like you to enter questions or comments into the chat box and we will monitor that. At the end of this seminar, we'll have about 15 minutes for questions and discussion. So as I said, please, please put questions into the chat box and you can submit those anytime. If something occurs to you while someone is speaking, feel free to type it in. We are recording this webinar and we will archive it to the MLEAD website following the event. And this introductory slide shows the, the website. I would really like to thank everyone for joining us today. And we're really excited to tell you about the integrated Health Sciences Core, um, of which the main speakers today are a part. So first, I'm going to provide a little overview of the center's mission, aims, and structure. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so this, this fantastic slide shows the core that we are part of. As noted, I'm Marie O'Neill. I have two co-leads of the core, Professor Sung Kyun Park and Lou Wang. Um, you will be also hearing from Dan McConnell, who directs our bio repository um, component, and Trish Komen, who's our public health practice liaison. Next slide, please. So the Integrated Health Sciences Core is part of a larger center funded by the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. And our mission is to improve the understanding of how environmental contributors may, sorry, <laughs> environmental exposures may contribute to causing chronic disease and conditions, including asthma, neurodegenerative diseases, metabolic syndrome, and prematurity. So this center supports research in environmental health sciences with three facility cores, which are listed here, the Integrated Health Sciences Core, um, the Exposure Assessment Core, and then the Community Engagement Core. We also fund pilot projects, support career development for new investigators, and we're one of our primary missions is to engage people in research on environmental health sciences. Next slide, please. So this is the structure of the center organization. Our director is Dana Dolanoy, and deputy director is John Meeker. Um, we have an external advisory board as well as an internal University of Michigan. And ah, um, a, a request is to turn off the closed captions, which would be terrific, I think. Um, perhaps. So we also have an internal advisory committee and a stakeholder advisory board that is convened by the, the Community Engagement Corps. Um, Amy Schultz and Barbara Israel lead our Community Engagement Corps. And then we have these uh, three facilities cores. And today what we'll be focusing on is the Integrated Health Sciences Corps. But you can see we're in our fifth year of funding from NIEHS. And this is a very active center intended to support uh, environmental health sciences research and translation of that research. And several universities across the country have these P30 centers. Next slide, please. So the overall aim of our center 
is to promote multi-directional understanding, or I should say of our core, um, multi-directional translational research using integrated approaches to advance our understanding or research on how environmental exposures across the life course. So from beginning in utero um, to old age and possibly intergenerational. And so our center enables us to capitalize on the rich set of NIH supported studies that we have. And these studies encompass a wide range of exposures and life stages. We also have a P30 repository kiosk, which provides information about resources for people interested in uh, conducting environmental health sciences research. Next slide, please. So the specific objectives of our integrated health sciences core are listed here. Overall, we're, in we're we're interested in supporting investigators in environmental health sciences with study design, laboratory protocols, statistical support that's relevant to advancing this research. Um, and we were able to support center members with a variety of advanced statistical approaches. Another objective of our core is to educate and train faculty, staff, fellow students, and practitioners on all of the pieces that go into environmental health sciences research. My colleagues will talk more about our education and training function. We also want to promote development of interdisciplinary collaborations, including bringing investigators who haven't traditionally focused on environmental health research uh, into the fold to collaborate with our center members. We also want to keep up the searchable database so people interested in doing more with environmental health sciences research can learn about other resources around. And then we also work closely with the Community Engagement Corps, led by Amy Schultz and Barbara Israel, and with strong connection to community partners with the intention to work in partnership with both community representatives as well as practitioners to ensure that the research gets translated to action. Next slide. All right, now I will turn it over to my colleague, Dan McConnell, who will tell you about some of the components of the core that he addresses. Dan? Thank you. Uh, my name is Dan McConnell, and I'm the director of a laboratory called Class Lab out on uh, Green Road in Plymouth. Uh, but first I want to, and I'll explain what we do and how we uh, are involved and how we work to facilitate some of these projects. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce the P30 repository kiosk, which is really set up to facilitate uh, any number of interactions. Um, I noticed that the um, URL has been posted on the chat. It's very simple, uh, mleedad.umich.edu. You can find it on the chat. Uh, and that kiosk allows uh, for it's searchable, so you can search by keywords, you can search by study titles, and basically look at data from all of the projects that are involved, see what specimens are available, and see what is um, useful for you for collaborative research. It also has uh, links to where you can uh, apply for membership. Uh, so the next slide, please. This is the class lab. Um, the address, we're out on Green Road, Green Road a little bit south of Plymouth. It's significantly off campus, shall we say. Um, we do three major functions out at the lab. Uh, we design and build uh, blood collection or biosample collection kits. We do a number of assays for a large variety of biomarkers and we provide long-term storage. Uh, we are accredited by uh, the College of American Pathologists, which is similar to the uh, way the hospitals, laboratory, and other biorepositories are, are accredited and uh, certified. So next slide, please. One of the, here's the, here's the slide that describes what we do as far as biosample collection kits. We design and build uh, 
collection of kits for a wide variety of uh, projects in vial specimens, including serum and plasma, whole blood, urine, stool, dental fluid, pancreatic fluid, um, pretty much anything that uh, somebody wants to collect to uh, measure a biomarker. We've uh, developed ways to do those collections and uh, store them. And these kits range from something very simple, as you see in the top uh, picture, which is just a simple uh, uh, saliva collection uh, tool to something a little more complex to, uh, we've had a kit that has 150 different sample vials. Uh, very complex uh, things that have uh, been used in some of the projects. Uh, all vials have unique machine readable barcodes uh, that are both uh, readable by, by wands and also on some of our automated instrumentation. And they're color coded, coded uh, for ease in identification and reduces errors. Um, for example, red top tubes are always serum, purple top tubes are EDDA plasma, uh, urine are coated with yellow top tubes. That keeps us and the collection uh, facilities, uh, makes everything uh, work just so much easier. So if I could have the next slide, please. Here's a small list of uh, assays that we've provided on a routine basis, uh, pretty uh, normal uh, clinical laboratory assays. Um, but we are able to do many, many different ELISA techniques, uh, as well as other instrument uh, uh, assays that are available on some of our automatic, automatic instrumentation. In the picture at the lower uh, left-hand corner is an Alpha Wasserman uh, instrument. We also have access to uh, Siemens and Roche instrumentation, uh, Roche in the near future. Uh, so we're able to perform any number of assays on some of these samples. Next slide. Biorepository storage, that's primarily uh, what we are involved in uh, most often for the P30. Um, there are multiple freezer options that are available that range from ambient temperature storage to liquid nitrogen. Um, and these are available for P30 members and others in the university or international community. Um, again, uh, there's no charge uh, for the P30 members that is included in uh, what the P30 uh, is funded to do. And once again, uh, we are also certified and inspected on an annual basis by the College of American Pathologists for our biorepository uh, operations. And that is my last slide and I'll uh, turn it over to the next person. Hi. Hi everyone, so my name is Lu Wang. I'm a professor in the Department of Biostatistics. Um, so I'm going to introduce our statistical services to everybody. Uh, so basically, our core built on the University of Michigan's strong um, grant development, study design, and their analysis um, resources. And this includes the Michar, uh, that is a very big and uh, award-winning program. So they actually are very helpful. And another unit that you want to turn to will be the uh, statistical analysis of biomedical education research, the SABER. And that actually is also uh, closely related to our department of biostatistics. They have fantastic staff and faculty members. Another um, unit you can work together with is called CSCAR, the Center for the Statistical Consultation and Research. So given those excellent resources, our core actually does not duplicate their services. Uh, we do provide a referral uh, for basic, um, those basic methodological and grant development advices. But in the meanwhile, we want to provide the more targeted and more advanced method consultations to everyone. And this is also free to our center members. Next slide, please. So our core will promote the use of cutting edge um, statistical tools and methods for most of the projects that will address the significant environmental health science priorities. For example, uh, we are going to tell you how to fit the curve for the exposure response lines 
and uh, how to deal with high dimensional multiplotons. And if they are correlated, what kind of variable selection models you can handle, can, you can use. And how to handle the special correlation, or st special interpretation, and also many other correlation or cluster type of data. Or even you have longitudinal data, how to handle those correlations. So those multi-level, not only in time, but also in space and also within clusters. Um, another different area people were may interested in is the gene environmental interactions. And we will um, also provide help on that. And like I mentioned, data dimension reduction is a very important um, field in this environmental health science research. And another area we have expertise is in causal inferences. So for example, mediation effects, those kind of things. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so like I mentioned, we do not uh, charge for anything for our consultancies. However, um, with the consult consultancy, we can help you for the grant proposal, uh, for the proposal development. Um, but after that, the ongoing statistical collaboration, either generated through this consultation or in the future, after your grant proposal is approved, you have the you know, um, incoming work together. And those for the actual cost of data specimen collect collections, that should be supported as part of your grant pro proposal or grant applications. Okay, so I also list a table for uh, the different resources from the university and when you are turning to us and we actually will help you to identify whether there is a resource that is helpful to you or useful uh, or you want you probably will be needed for us like we will go with more target um, consult consultations from our center. Next slide please. Uh, our center also have a very important component is to educate or disseminate the knowledge of advanced statistical methods. And some of the methods will be new to the area, but we would love to see whether they can provide some benefits to this new research area. Okay, so we actually to, to foster this type of uh, um, communication, dissemination, we have several things going on. One is environmental statistics discussion seminars. And typically we have one to two per semester. Um, but in the fall semester, we have the environmental statistical days. Uh, in the past, we have a symposium, but this year we will have a full week for that. So that is why in the fall semester, we typically only have one statistics discussion seminar. Okay, so in the winter semester, we'll have more of those kind of seminar. Um, a second tool that we typically will hold is for the environmental statistics workshops, and that is also annually. And that is uh, typically happen in the winter uh, semester as well. So we will announce those information later on. And like I mentioned in the past, our core has a very big symposium or later on that is developed as a environmental statistics day. And during the day we have more focused or concentrated discussion or seminars with keynote speakers. Um, but this year with the COVID-19 restrictions and uncertainties, and we cannot invite people to travel. And in the meanwhile, we wonder like people probably cannot have the fixed total day to, um, you know, uh, concentrate on this topic and therefore we provide this to be a full week and then we will use the lunch time to provide all of this information. Okay, so our statistics discussion seminar this year uh, or this fall will be on September 22nd from 12 to 1 o'clock and that is uh, provided by Professor Wu from Department of Biostatistics at University of Michigan. And he's also a research assistant professor from Michigan Institute of Data Sciences, MIDAS. And he will talk about micro-randomized trials in mobile health. And this is a new area with the wearable devices. Hopefully that will provide some you know, advantages or benefit to our field as well. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so on this slide, I listed uh, the information for our exciting environmental statistics week. So we will have a new format this year. We have the full week of statistics, but don't worry, it's only noon time. So you can bring your lunch and come to listen. And this year we have the new theme because of the COVID-19 research. Okay, and also we'll put that together with, you know, many statistical methods people have been applied to this research area together with the environmental health science challenges. So you will see that from Monday, we will have Professor Xu from Johns Hopkins University. And she is going to talk about COVID-19 and the racial ethnic disparities. On Tuesday, October 20th, Professor Shi Hongling from Harvard University will talk about what their group learned from the COVID-19 data in Wuhan, in USA, and in the whole world. And uh, on Wednesday, um, our University of Michigan-based group of uh, people, they will talk about, uh, so basically, uh, Professor Emily Summers will be there on Wednesday. So she will talk about our uh, excellent group in the medical school, that how they treated our COVID-19 patients and their frontline findings, and also their EHS, the environmental health sciences, you know, how they found that is related to environmental health sciences. So Professor Summers is also affiliated with our Department of uh, Environmental Health Sciences. On Thursday, our own Professor Park will give a talk and uh, he will talk about the environmental um, cadmium mortality from influenza and pneumonia. And on Friday, October 23rd, Professor Peter Song, their group actually developed a special temporal um, prediction model, which is very unique and uh, very uh, interesting then that helps a lot of counties and states to uh, find their county level COVID-19 risks. Okay, so I think that is all I want to talk about our arrangement and uh, um, our group about the statistical consultation for our center members. Hope to see you um, during that week and also for the discussion day, a discussion seminar. Great, so I think I'm on the next slide. I'm Trish Komen, and I am a researcher in environmental health sciences, and I'm also a part of the College of Engineering at U of M. So my role is to be the practice liaison. So by practice, we mean public health practice. So a linkage to the community of professionals, um, whether that's um, community, government, or industry. So we provide uh, practice consultation to help um, either researchers find these partners or these partners to find us when they have research questions. And we also um, offer a variety of uh, professional skill workshops listed here. And our primary focus is on um, public health practice. Uh, we'll be focusing this year again on climate change and health, uh, this time through the lens of environmental justice. And I've got a, a flyer from last year's uh, Earth Day event where we had Dr. Renee Salas um, from Harvard uh, come and talk about the Lancet countdown and the importance of uh, climate change. We, uh, on the next slide, have um, had a variety of different um, interactions with leaders in public health practice uh, from the uh, national climate assessment to systematic review um, and looking at ways to evaluate population level uh, low dose toxicity from endocrine active chemicals and also um, looking at some new legislation in 2016 which was uh, the toxic substance control act amendments so what we're trying to do is to connect um, the research and work that you're doing to uh, practitioners who hold these problems um, and to have a, a multi-directional interaction with that. So be happy to answer questions um, when we're all done. But I think that um, our next uh, speaker and on the next slide will be Sun Kyun Park. Okay, hello, uh, my name is Sun Kyun Park. I'm a co-leader uh, of, of this uh, integrated health sciences core and also uh, associate professor in epidemiology and environmental health sciences. So the, our uh, course, another activity uh, is uh, uh, running this environmental research seminar series. So this environmental research seminar uh, provide an uh, interdisciplinary forum for 
uh, learning from speakers and uh, community members and, uh, and also sharing uh, recent, uh, this environment health uh, research between center members. So as we, uh, you know, meet together today, so this series bring um, the center members, uh, faculty, uh, students, staff, fellows, and uh, practitioners from uh, across the university, but uh, also, um, you know, outside the, the university. So uh, we invite speakers from uh, within the center and the uh, University of Michigan, but uh, also the outside the university community. So the last year we invited uh, speakers from uh, speakers who talk about a range of topics from uh, various units and um, and also we collaborate with the uh, community engaged core uh, to talk about this uh, community based particip participatory research uh, panel discussion we did last year. Um, and uh, a few uh, notable speakers, um, Bruce Tone and Jack Spangler uh, from Harvard who talk about this nature and our built environment. Uh, the Dr. Bessie uh, Waslevich, who was from uh, Michigan Department, Department of uh, Health and uh, Community Health, uh, who talked about this PFAS issue in Michigan and how the, the state of Michigan uh, respond to this PFAS issue. And uh, we also invited Dr. Ivo Dinov from the medical school and talk about this uh, advanced uh, the statistic and then uh, uh, online computational resources. And uh, the only this year, Dr. Jackie Goodrich, who talked about this environmental exposures and epigenetics and health in uh, vulnerable populations. And unfortunately, we, uh, we couldn't continue uh, since March because of the COVID-19. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, but, you know, the, uh, this year we resumed this environmental research seminar series and as you can see is so, and then this time so the bi-monthly Tuesday from noon to 1 p.m and we will continue this environmental research seminar series and um, uh, or this year's seminar will be virtual and I am happy to share that uh, this year's uh, from the speakers so, um, uh, Professor Ted Zellers, who will talk on uh, October 6th uh, about this wearable microsystem for direct measurement of uh, multi uh, volatile organic compounds exposure. And another speaker, uh, Dr. Kim Mackey from uh, University of Michigan Medical School Family Medicine, who will speak on uh, this uh, vaginal microbiome research. Uh, we also invite, uh, we will invite uh, Professor Murray and Rosenberg at uh, School of Nursing, uh, who is currently conducting uh, this COVID-19, so impact of COVID-19 on uh, service workers. So she will share her uh, current research on this COVID-19, especially this uh, potential disparity issue among uh, service workers. Next slide, please. Uh, so the part of uh, so working with uh, the Emily Core Center. So the, just uh, to give you an announcement, so Emily the virtual event on October seventh. So the PFAS, so per and polyfluoroalkyl substances exposure toxicity and policy. So this Emily the event uh, will have. Uh, three speakers uh, who are experts of this PFAS area, Dr. Elsie Sunderland, uh, Jamie Dewitt, and uh, the last speaker um, at this moment, uh, not confirmed yet, but will be uh, uh, shared very soon. And so uh, this will be a, a good event. So registration is required. So you can go to this Emily the website and then you can find registration form. Next slide, please. Oh, so, so this is the end. So thank you for your attention. So we will open Q&A. So I will turn this to our director, Marie O'Neill. 
Thank you, Sunkyun. Well, I don't see the chat box filled with questions. Mostly there have been helpful links provided by Trish. Thank you, Trish. Um, but we're more than happy to entertain questions. I should say one of the things that our, our core did this summer, and I'm sure this is familiar to everyone, is to think about how are we going to continue our education and training and interaction function in light of the pandemic. And so as you can see, um, we turn Statistics Day into Statistics Week, and um, we really hope people can participate in those events virtually and we wish we could offer you lunch or snacks. Okay, Tasha Kaiser is asking us if we are going to provide these slides and it would be nice to have the links in one place. Uh, our web guru, Robin Wiley has a thumbs up, so we will. Thank you, Tasha. William Southern is asking if we're looking for student engagement or simply, <laughs> re wow, there's a lot of questions all of a sudden. Um, we, we love to have um, students engaged in the lectures. I, I think, i um, not sure I'm totally following the question, but you, know, you can look on our website and see that there's a lot of environmental health sciences research going on. And so if you're a student and you're interested in this field, we certainly would love you to participate in our scheduled events, but also welcome you writing directly to some of us to um, convey your interest. And oftentimes there are research opportunities. Okay. Marie, um, if I could just add quickly, um, certainly for the practice workshop, that's been an opportunity in the past for the professionals that we bring in for our, our um, meetings to interact directly with students. We often do an informal career talk or ways for students to, to interact one-on-one -on -one, um, or in small settings uh, with our uh, engaged speakers. So happy to work with uh, folks on that. Okay, and we have- uh, so Marie, one more. Um... So another one is uh, sometimes we, uh, you know, the our community uh, people reach out to us and then uh, ask about any uh, help. And then sometimes we find this could be a good um, uh, like a internship type project. And then we uh, connect, you know, our student and then this community. So that could be another uh, uh, like example of student engagement. And also, I, I think the Lou can add more, but uh, like a, so, so, so biostatistics student working uh, together with uh, uh, our center member. Uh, and then so some of the this, uh, statistic consultation and the help can, so the student involvement can also help. And it looks like Professor Oman, who is also one of the leaders of our center, has a question for Dan McConnell. Um, do you have proteomic services or link with the Department of Pathology Lab? And I just sent Gail a, a note. Uh, we do not have the instrumentation for proteomics at this, at this time. Uh, so we are not able to provide uh, those sort of services. Uh, and but we do often work with the University of Michigan Hospital Pathology Department for certain assays that they might be able to do more efficiently at less cost than we can. Uh, for example, glucose, triglycerides, and cholesterol, they do them so frequently and so routinely that they can offer a price break. So we do work with the hospital pathology frequently. Another question that came in, Marie, that you may want to answer generally is for people who would like to access the core center consultations, um, what's the best way to go about doing that? <laughs> That's a, a great question. Um, I, I think I will, I will kick that over to Robin that um, we do we have on our website a specific link where you can request a core center consultation. I'm, I should know this. Um, yeah, we don't have a specific link. Um, of course, okay. we have contact information for just about everyone. And, you know, if you don't know who to contact, you can just use the contact form on the website. 
Right. And I and the website, the the overall website on the very top, there are a range of um, tabs and one of those tabs is cores and it lists mm -hmm. the our core, the exposure assessment core, which Professor Batterman leads and the omics and bioinformatics core, which is led by Maureen Sartor. And on those links, you will see emails for all of the the core folks and we we tend to respond to your emails so that's that's really the probably the most effective way to request core services and we can help you with those thank you trish for pointing out that question um let's see other questions? I, I also I want to encourage, I know we're the intention of today's seminar is to introduce the services of the Integrated Health Sciences Corps, but I would give a, a shout out to Community Engagement Corps and Exposure uh, Assess. All the other cores have services to provide. And then the center itself um, provides pilot funding for pilot projects for center members and and others and so those are announced a few times a year and have been really useful for many of our our members to um, collect pilot data or in some cases work with community partners on an environmental health issue of direct concern so um, you know keeping keeping apprised of what our center is doing and what it can offer community members in the university to support environmental health sciences research is you know a good idea because there are many benefits to being part of our center not only the benefits our core provides but um just the you know this is one of niehs's infrastructure cores which is really intended to support and and um, stimulate collaborative research and translation of research to real world problems <laughs>